Hello and welcome to the Business of Acting, the Inside Scoop on Casting Panel and Workshop, presented by the SAG-AFTRA National Native Americans Committee in partnership with the SAG-AFTRA Foundation. OCO, I'm Delana Studi. I am the chair of the SAG-AFTRA National Native Americans Committee. And tonight you'll be watching a two-part panel and a workshop. You do have a program that includes the bios of tonight's workshop panelists, who include casting director Renee Haynes, <laughs> casting associate Catherine Zamora Benson, <laughs> actors Wes Studi, <laughs> Tennis Parento, <laughs> and myself. We would like to thank our committee volunteers. Don Jameson, raise your hand or stand up. Right here, front row. Donna Brooks. And Ron B. We'd also like to thank the SAG-AFTRA EEO and Diversity Department and the SAG-AFTRA Foundation. There will be one intermission where we'll also be doing a quick Q&A. At this time, um, as you came in, you received a note card. Feel free to write a question on that note card. Someone will pick it up during that time, and those are the questions that we'll ask during that Q&A. So make sure you have your questions ready. Unfortunately, this, this two-part event is very long, and we have to stay within our allotted time frame. So as a reminder, please do not record this event. This program is already being taped for educational purposes, and it will be online. So at this time, I'm gonna ask that you please turn off your cell phones, and please do not take any flash photography or video. So I'll give you a second to do that. Thank you, thank you. Um, and now I am honored to introduce David Bun Martin, who will be doing our land acknowledgement. We thank American Indian Artists Incorporated for bringing David to our attention and to this event. David is Nednai, Chiricahua Apache, Montauk, and Shinnecock. He is a multimedia artist, curator, author, and educator. He has been director and chief curator of the Shinnecock Nation Cultural Center and Museum in the Southampton of, of New York uh, for 12 years, and he serves as the chairperson of American Indian Artists Incorporation, also known as Amarinda. And he is the historic preservation officer for the Shinnecock Nation of Long Island. So please give a round of applause to Mr. David Bun Martin. Hello, hello everyone. The land of the five boroughs that make up New York City, especially Manhattan, which was called Manahatta, was for thousands of years a location for meetings and gatherings of various tribal nations, the Muncie, Delaware, or Lenape, the Haudenosaunee, the Merrick, Canarsie, Rockaway, Matinecock, Setauket, Uncachog, Shinnecock, and Montauk. We acknowledge the peoples of these nations, cultures, and communities, elders, past and present, and future generations. We acknowledge the indigenous people who are present right now and the land and waters on which this event is taking place. Finally, we also acknowledge that Native American peoples are contemporary with living cultures, communities, and achievements today, and are not just figures of the past. Thank you. Um, I also want to let everyone know that um, you don't need to take notes for this evening. We're going to go pretty fast through a bunch of information, and we do have handouts at the end of the evening as you're leaving. Okay. All right, we're beginning with auditions. Acting is your art, but auditioning is your business. You need to tune up your business so that you can practice your art. So we're going to go through some real basics, like, um, uh, well, Delano will tell you about these basics. So here's the lingo. And I apologize if some of you already know what we're talking about, but just because there might be some people in the audience who are not aware, I'm going to do a brief e explanation of every topic. So we have a headshot, which is basically your calling card. That's your photo, and it's called a headshot because it's a photo of your head. Uh, next thing is your resume. So your resume is the work that you have done. It's also your special skills and any education that you have in regards to acting. 
Um, we ask that you keep your resume current. We also ask that you don't lie on your resume. Um, keep in mind, Meryl Streep started off with nothing on her resume, too. Uh, breakdowns. So breakdowns are what your agent gets. And basically, it is a breakdown of your character. So it's a character uh, description and also a synopsis of what the film, TV show, the play is about. Those are very important. That is your roadmap. The next thing is the audition, which is the appointment. That's what you want to get. You want to get into that room. And so an audition is your appointment to be seen. The next item is sides. So sides are copies of the script, usually pages from the script that you're going to be doing for the audition. Uh, you should have these memorized. And if you do have them memorized, then you are considered to be off book, which is the next item. And then you see the word mark. Mark is not a man. Mark is where you stand when you go into the room. So whenever they say hit your mark, please don't hit a man. Um, slate. Uh, slate basically is how you announce yourself. So basically it's going to be your name. Sometimes they ask you to include your height, who your representation is, what role you're auditioning for. And in some cases they may ask if you have a valid passport or your comfort level with, say, riding a horse. Um, reader. Reader is the person that's in the room that will be reading opposite of you. If you go into a casting director's office, it will usually be a casting associate. Please be nice to these people. Uh, if you're putting yourself on tape, then it can be a trusted friend, some of the, someone that you feel comfortable with. So a uh, reader is that person. Frame. If you're putting yourself on tape, and sometimes when you go into a casting room, they will put you, yourself, they will put you on tape. And so it's best that you always have a frame. And we're going we're gonna to give you more detail about this. But basically, we want it to be from the chest up to about maybe an inch above your head. And so usually, unless they tell you otherwise, so pay close attention. Please pay close attention to the instructions. They will tell you if they want uh, from your chest up or if they want more of a three-quarter shot. But just depending on what they're looking for, that's how you frame yourself. Blocking. Blocking is any movement that you have in the scene. Uh, sometimes in your sides, it'll tell you that you're supposed to pick something up or you're supposed to do something, so that is your blocking. Callback is what we're aiming for. Callback means you did a great job and we're calling you back in so we can see you do it a second time. And of course, if you're lucky, then you're going to book the job and you will get a booking. And hopefully, that will lead you to the last item, which is SAG after, which is the union, the greatest union on this planet, if you are an actor. And we hope that you get to join this union. That's why we're here. We want to create more work for you, and this way you can be safeguarded as an artist. Right. OK, so now we're going to give you a little bit of a rundown on the um, okay headshots and resumes. Um, uh, Let's go to the second picture. OK, so this is um, this actress Ren Hanami's theatrical picture. Um, and on the back of her resume, you'll see there's a little thumbnail there. Um, that's because I always recommend if you're carrying hard copies of your headshot and you've got a very serious look um, on the front and your mouth is closed, put a little thumbnail of your smiling self on the back or vice versa, um, because you may want two different ones for whatever kind of show you're going in for. Um, because we always, want, we always wonder what your teeth look like if we can't see them, OK? No, it's OK. 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 No, we didn't. OK, so here's a basic resume format. Um, uh, you know, you, the one thing I want to make sure that everyone knows is that you should never, and I think you all do know this, but you should never put your um, personal address on your resume or, or any personal information that you don't want out. Um, and we've got acting, performing experience, education. Um, I want to point out this special skills and ability. I almost always, when I'm looking at an actor, when I look at their resume, I always look at their special skills and abilities first. And their height. So don't, don't neglect to put your height on your resume, too. But do you want to take that? So once again, on special skills, we want to make sure that it is something that you can do. Because in some situations, you will be asked to do it. And so it's best that you know what you're doing. And I'm going to um, turn this over to Wes, because Wes has a special skill. And he'll tell you about his experience. All right, uh, my name is Wes Studi. I'm six foot two on IMDb, and I can't change it. 
<laughs> no, no, thank you, Delena. Uh, actually, I did want to share a little quick story with you in terms of uh, knowing what it is you can do. The first job I got out of Los Angeles was a matter of uh, the producer asking me, could I ride a horse, shoot a gun, and speak a language other than English simultaneously? I said, yes. In three days, I was on set. That was my first one. But I also said for Dances with Wolves, I, uh, I do ride horses, yes. So I was uh, given direction out to Norm Howell's ranch out in, uh, out in the valley. Um, I went out. And uh, Norm says, listen, uh, I'm going to shoot you. I've got to put this on tape so I can send it in to the producers and whatever. So what I want you to do is hop on his horse. I want you to take him down to the end of the lot that way, turn around, give me a spin if you can, and then come back as fast as you can, stick his tail in the dirt right here in front of me, hop off and go, whoo! <laughs> so I hopped on. I went down, whirled him around a bit, came back, jumped off and said, who there for you, Norm? And he says, oh, yeah, that's great, that's great, that's great. Here, let's go, let's go take a look at it. And he had a beta, I think, back then. You remember beta? Uh, so we go running into the house, and he sticks it in there, click. And then his face, face kind of got red and went down like that. He said, Wes, uh, I didn't get that. I didn't turn it on, man. <laughs> So we had to go out and do it again, which I was wore out by the time that was happening. But at least I was able to show him that I could ride a horse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if you can't ride a horse, you do not want to be in that situation, because that would be very dangerous. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. I think that a lot of people who are just starting in the business have this idea that they need to look like their glamorous self. Truly what's going to get you the job and get you into the right audition is the thing that looks like you. So if I, if I call you in for something and you walk in and you don't look like the part that I'm actually casting, you're not going to get the job. So you're doing yourself a favor if you you look like yourself. And, and a lot of the things that are cast, especially if you look at cable TV, these are people that look like people. Um, so just putting that out there. Right. We're looking for interesting people, not pretty people, mostly. OK, breakdown services. Do you want to talk about this, what we see as for breakdowns? Uh, breakdown services. So um, this is our this is a big tool that casting directors use. It's how we communicate with agents and managers about the projects that we're casting. So we write a little description of everything we're looking at, and we use breakdown services to get that information to them. The agents and managers then can go through and go through their roster of clients and submit the actors that they think are right for each of the roles. Uh, we then get to look on our site. I think I'm going through these quickly. That's, That's what a breakdown looks like, right? So you have the role, and you have the age, and you have things like ethnicity and, and a little bit about them, and mm -hmm. do they need a driver's license, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and then once the agents submit, we get to see little, uh, little pins of all the different headshots. We can hit on the headshot, look at everyone's resume, and, and then decide from that huge amount of people that are submitted, you can imagine, especially if it's going nationally or bi-coastally, we select the people that, are, that we think are, are right to bring in for the part. Like for, so for example, this is one agency. The, the character is uh, a 50-year-old uh, police officer who took an early retirement. And these are one agency's submissions for, they go through their roster and this is who they've sent us. OK. And let's go on to the next one. This is what we see and how many people are submitted for each role. And this is just an example of the pictures for one role. OK, now going back to that Jack Halloran, the police officer, we got a total of 5,411 photos for that one role. OK, that's why your photo is extremely important thinking about your, uh, how you're going to get, make the most impact to have us notice your photo because we're looking at it on a computer screen and it's going to be about this big, okay? I also, I'm just going to add one thing too. Uh, living in New York with, with the amazing amounts of theater that go on, you know, Broadway, off-Broadway, in somebody's basement, et cetera, part of what casting directors do in this city is we see a ton of theater. I see theater every single weekend one, sometimes two shows a weekend. 
Um, so while this is one tool that we use a lot, I also make my own lists. So anything that you do um, is going to help you. If, you. if you're sitting there saying, I don't have an agent, I don't have a manager, and it seems insurmountable that I'm going to get anywhere in my career, you, you have the ownership on you to, to do plays, to do student films, to do all of that work which will help you, and people are looking, you know, as part of our job to find the people that haven't been seen yet. So this is my good friend Maggie McAllister, and she works all the time. And these are three headshots that usually book her work. So uh, the one in the blue dress is what she used for when she auditions for television. Uh, the one in the jacket is her commercial shot. And the one in the black dress is what she uses for theatrical shots. And so this way you can see uh, she knows her type. She knows what she goes out for. And so she had headshots made that, that showcase who she is and her type. OK, so a little bit of fun with headshots. Um, here we have two lovely headshots from Joanna DeGeneres. These are both beautiful photos. But one, I think, from a casting director standpoint, is more impactful and is going to grab my attention more. Who thinks it's number one? Let's hear it claps. Yeah? OK, who thinks it's number two? Yeah. OK, from my perspective, you're right. Um, uh, it, it's just because it, it, this is a great picture, and she looks like a real kid. But that picture, there's something about her eyes that draw you right into that photo, and that's what you're aiming for. You're aiming for that that intangible thing where it looks like you're going to say something, and I want to know what it is. Okay, let's try this one. Number one, who's who's voting for one? Okay, who's voting for two? OK, see, I disagree, and I'll tell you why. Um, for me, number, this is just my opinion, though, and the panel may think otherwise, but number one is very immediate. It's very friendly. It looks like she just walked up to me and is saying hi. Number two, for me, while it's a beautiful photo, looks like she's employee of the month at her insurance agency. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a glossed over cast in the eyes. Do you see what I'm talking about now that I pointed out? Um, so so I, I think that immediacy is something that's really important. Our friend Kehlani, who has always done these workshops with us, once um, shared with one of our audiences, and I thought this was so brilliant, he said whenever he's getting his photo taken, he thinks of the camera as a, a young child that he adores, you know, or somebody that he really adores. And he always has this beautiful, warm look in his eyes and in and, and his countenance and everything. So think about things like that. And just find somebody in that will help you take pictures and, and work on it. Because it's really easy to be an actor and work in front of a moving camera, but it is really hard for some people to take a still photo. And, and that still photo, remember, is your little thumbnail that's going to get you in the door to do the audition. So, OK, this, this se next segment, we're not going to pick photos because they're all good and they're all very similar and very close. But what I want to illustrate here is this is a young Native actor that we love who um, went into his headshot session with five different looks just pulled from his closet, but it gives him five very different, without being costumey, five very different looks that his agent can submit him for. Do you see what I mean? They're all slightly different, and, and yet they all have a, the feel of a different type of project that he could be submitted for. And just with a simple pull, pull something from your wardrobe that gives you that different feel um, will expand that. That said, I don't think it's really cool when I click on someone's um, actor's access or, or on um, uh, the photos that their agent have submitted. And if there's 35 different photos and there's one with a nurse's costume and one with, you know, a secretary with the glasses like this, um, you know, <laughs> edit yourself and make sure that these are p characters that you have 
like that are inside you that you would play because it's very different in f you know in film you're going to play something very close to who you are so those those wardrobe pieces should already be in your closet okay here's a few fails all right all right no no matter how cute your pet is please please don't don't, don't, and you, you would think that this is staged, but I have over the years received so many headshots of people with their pets. And okay, do not send this photo if this is what you are gonna walk in the door looking like. Okay, this, this is our friend Tyler, who is a lovely actor and a really great looking guy. But he gets so much work looking like this that this is what he looks like. So, you know, his agent is not submitting that photo and you shouldn't send that photo if you look one way and you're gonna walk in the door like that because they're all gonna be really shocked if you do that. <laughs> and now we're gonna talk about the audition. And so this is Tyler, the person from the pictures you just saw. And um, we're gonna talk about what you need to do to tape your own audition. So, so, so many, it's, there, we do this audition around the country and a lot of people don't have the luxury of, like you guys, living where there's a lot of great casting professionals that are able to see you. And sometimes you might get a call from an LA office that wants your tape overnight and you're gonna have to find a way to self-tape it because they're not doing sessions here in New York. So the, we, we just wanna give you the tools and some tips on how to make the best tape possible so that you are very competitive in the market. Um, the number one thing that I always wanna share with you is Unlike when you have an audition and you're going in the room and you have that 10 minutes and you're in the room and you really have no control over the situation except for that's the time you need to be there and y you've got to do your thing then. Um, you might have a day or two, maybe if you're lucky, a week to get this tape back. So take as much time as you can to prepare this tape and do a good job because this is your five to eight minutes to be seen. You're, you're gonna have our undivided attention when you send us this, this tape. So make sure that you prepare well. And by preparing, it means when, when you're doing a self-tape, please learn the lines. Um, unlike when you walk into an audition, you, do, you can have the paper in your hand and you don't have to be off book. But anytime you know that you're going to be videotaped, if if I'm taping you or if, if you're holding your pages in your hand and you're looking like this, I'm gonna be seeing the top of your head with my camera, um, even if, if I'm taping you in the room. So you've gotta really, really school yourself on how to refer to the page and keep your face up. And when you're doing a self-tape, you need to keep your face up all the time. There really is no excuse if you can be off book, it would be great. In, in your benefit. Um, and appearance, please pull the wardrobe from your own closet. Um, give us a hint of the character, um, not, um, I've had people, uh, I, I cast a lot of uh, Native and First Nations and Indigenous projects, and I've had people come in full regalia to an audition, and it was the wrong look completely. And it really does take the director out of what he's looking at because we're looking at all, everything that's around you and we need to be just looking at you. So keep it simple. And so now we're gonna talk about preparing for the audition. And so Tannis and Wes, feel free to jump in if you'd like. Um, so basically, we will, this will be included in your, hand in your handouts. You're always playing yourself in altered circumstances and relationships. And so what you always need to know whenever you go into the room is what you have on that breakdown. Remember the breakdown, the description of your character and the synopsis of the scene? That's your roadmap. That's telling you what they're looking for in this character. And so using that and the scene that you have, the, the size that we were given, and in some cases you're not given the entire script, so all you have are what you can gather off of that page. And so basic questions to ask is where am I? 
Where is this scene taking place? What just happened before this scene is occurring? Where did I just come from? What do I want? What gets in my way? What's in my way? What do I do to get what I want? And usually it's with the person that you're reading opposite of. Uh, it's always nice to keep it active. And uh, we always say, you know, make, the, make choices. Don't be afraid to make big choices. Go in and make a choice. Sometimes the acting director, just the casting director, just wants to see that you've made one. Uh, Tannis, Wes, would you like to add on to any of this? Yeah, I, all of these are, all of the things I do as well. Um, but I also have gotten to a point now where I remember to allow a bit of myself into the, to put some of myself into the role too and not, not go in thinking, what do I think they might want from me? Mm -hmm. But just like Delina said, to make, a, make strong choices and bring part of myself. Because there's always a part of myself in every role that I'm either auditioning for or playing. Yeah, I agree, totally. <laughs> uh, no, but I, what I would add to this is that I, I think the first two, while they're important, uh, they're, they're not quite as important as what do I want. Mm -hmm. Now, aside from the obvious, the job, uh, what, what you want hopefully is contained in your sides. And that is probably one of the uh, most important things in terms of uh, not only acting but in life. When you think about it, uh, it's a matter of, say, learning a language. If you are in a situation wherein uh, uh, you uh, don't have the means to ask for what you want, you could easily starve, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. You, if you can't have your needs met uh, because you can't communicate, you're in a world of hurt, you know? So. That's, that's what I would say is probably the most important part of it is wherein if your sides tell you what it is that your character wants, that's what you believe. You got to believe, even in an audition. I, I just want to share, I recently came across a quote that sort of speaks to all of this um, by Sanford Meisner that says, don't be an actor, be a human being who works with what exists under imaginary circumstances. And I think that, that that says a lot to what Wes and, and what Tana said about putting a part of herself into the role, because I think that's what's going to make you interesting in the room, putting yourself into the role. I would also just add one more thing that I, I do as well, um, is working, if I'm working in my apartment or wherever I'm working on the scene, um, doing it as much physically as I would if I were, if I had booked the job and I was on set. Um, and then use that energy and what I did in that preparation and bring that into the room because the room is nothing like, most likely gonna, not gonna be what it's gonna be like on set. So if I can have that live in me and then bring that into the very strange audition room <laughs> where I'm doing this, then that's really helpful I find. Okay, so now we're going to move on to backdrop lighting, camera placement, and reader placement. Um, I think, so with regard to background, backdrop and lighting, okay, this is, a, this is a picture of our friend Ren, who we saw in the beginning. See that center picture? That is a brown door in my office, and that's a blue wall in my office. Seconds apart, we took this shot of Ren in front of the brown door, and that shot of Wren in front of the blue wall. Now, while the color is not perfect on that, you can see that how, how a backdrop makes a world of difference when making your audition tape. So keep that in mind, and don't wait until you have an audition. Move around your space and find the places that look good where there's some light or you can manufacture some light there. All right, camera and reader placement. Um, Tyler is a very tall guy. He's like six foot four. So um, I always like to um, tell people when they're making their own tapes to elevate the camera so that the camera is at eye level for you who are auditioning and making the tape. Eye level, um, because that's going to be your best, um, uh, how, we, how we can see you best. And Tara, um, our reader here, 
is standing right next to the camera so that when you're looking into towards the camera, you're looking at your reader, but we're going to see your eyes because your eyes are everything in the audition. Um, and I want to say to all of you who are going to put a reader um, next to your camera like that, make sure that you experiment with the sound um, and do a few um, tests because the level of sound um, of the reader is going to be very loud mm -hmm. if she's right next to the camera like that. So y your reader has to do a few adjustments possibly. And Renee, before you move on, I, I would like to add on, uh, whenever you're doing your reader placement, uh, what I always like to do is I just do a tape where I record my eye lines mm -hmm. and then I play it back to see if they're too far off camera. Mm -hmm. And then I find a way to make them closer to camera and also make them distinct. So uh, always check your focal points before you even do the scene. Right, and eye lines are super important because say you're talking to two different people in your scene, you really need to establish and not make that muddy. Here's, here's X and here's Y over here. Um, and uh, keep that, because once you believe that they're there and there, then I'm gonna believe it too when we're watching your tape. Okay, framing. Um, framing is uh, very important um, when you're, for a slate where you're introducing yourself, we always like to see a full frame where I if, you're, if your space allows it, uh, feet up, if not, you know, knees up. Um, but when we watch your audition, we really want to see this to here, sometimes tighter, sometimes a little bit further back, depends on the action in the scene. But the framing is so important because if I can't see your eyes, it it's, it's makes it very, very difficult for me to move you to the next, um, to, to, to understand what's going on with you. Because when, and every casting office is different and this might be different for, for Catherine, but when I'm watching you, I usually don't care about what you're saying and how you're saying it. I care about how you're listening and responding, okay? Listening and responding, that second in between your lines is what I'm looking for because th that shows me if it's an, you can, replicate that immediacy of having an original thought and, and giving it back to your reader. That's why your reader is important and that's why your framing and your eyes are important. Okay, and then quiet feet. Oh, wait, I'm just gonna add something really okay. quick. In terms of like keeping it simple and why the framing is so important, we really are interested in just seeing what you can do for the scene in terms of the acting. So when you, I Sometimes actors feel like, oh, I have a self tape. I really have the opportunity to make a production out of it. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, I'm going to smoke in my scene and then I'm going to do it far away so that I can enter the scene and slam the door. And, you know, it becomes about the props and it becomes about sort of the action of the scene. I promise you, keep it simple. You don't need the props. You know, even if the scene says the guy's smoking, for the audition, you don't need to do it. You, you really don't. Just live in the role, keep it framed right here. All we want to see is, is what you bring to the role. It's, it's your face. Simplicity and, and keeping it grounded and real will help you every time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then quiet feet. This is something that I think we all see. Um, and people don't realize that they're doing it. I would probably be doing it if I weren't sitting right now. And I'm just going to get up and I'm going to show you. OK, imagine that your frame is here. Okay. And a lot of people do this. They don't even, they, they, they mm -hmm. unconsciously just move from foot to foot and they don't realize. Now, imagine that this is my frame and if I'm moving like this and I'm not even realizing it, pretty soon if, my, if you're not riveting, my director is gonna be looking at you like this and pretty soon he's gonna go, oh, those are nice curtains. You know, because he's gonna drift right off if you are not riveting. And, and so I've always tried to tell people to keep really quiet feet. Um, it doesn't mean you can't move because you, you certainly can, but watch yourself, do it a couple times and see if you 
unconsciously do this because you might be surprised and, and see that you do. Uh, I'm going to add to that. If you do a scene, if you do a scene seated, mm -hmm. be careful of not leaning forward too much because again, yeah. we have a 2D image of you that we're showing. And if you do this, you suddenly have no neck and I can't really see what you properly look like. Um, and also, you drop out of frame. Right, and don't and and don't do a um, swivel chair. Don't do a swivel chair, please, <laughs> because you won't know it, but you'll be swiveling. Do All right, so we're gonna. Are we gonna play? Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm six foot two. Don't do this. <laughs> were you in my room, dude? No. What's wrong with this scene? What can't we see? We can't see his eyes, okay? The, unfortunately, they never got closer. They never got closer to that, all right? Let's, okay. Now, when using a, the proper backdrop, it doesn't mean that everybody has to go out and paint a wall of their home blue, although if you make a lot of self-tapes, it wouldn't hurt. Um, <laughs> blue, gray, whatever, you know, hang a nice piece of art there and then move it when you have to do the tape. Um, Tyler, I'm six foot two. Slate, we move in. Tyler, I'm six foot two. Were you in my room, dude? No. Okay, do you see, do you see the difference? And, and that's with the reader right here. Um, and he would be looking right towards the camera, but not um, into the camera. And if, if you don't happen to have a, a, a video camera, but you have an iPhone or you have a friend who has an iPhone, this is the same audition. Just We just picked up an iPhone and shot the same thing. My room, dude. No. OK, so if you're traveling and you, ne you, need, you get a call from your agent or, or Actors Access contacts you and you need to make a tape, there's kind of no excuse if, if, you, if you just grab something. And like I always tell people when they're traveling, please be prepared with your materials that you need to send an audition because sometimes the role won't wait for you to get back from your holiday. OK? All right. This one is super, super important. Watch it back before you send it. I know that there are so many people that have sent me tapes that do not watch it back. I am not kidding about this. this there was somebody who they kind of moved out of frame a little bit and this. They didn't have pants on, <laughs> OK? I know that that was not intentional, <laughs> and we weren't meant to see that. <laughs> but, but, and they obviously <laughs> did not watch it back because it was not part of, you know, this scene. Um, so, watch it back because the sound may need adjusting, the frame may need adjusting. It may not be the work that you want to represent you. This is your one shot. You don't get another. And likewise, don't send five takes of the same scene, especially if you don't change it up. You know, you might want to send two tapes of the same scene, but be sure to change it up. If you send me five tapes of the same scene, I am going to think that you can't take direction or whatever because I don't know what reason there would be to send five tapes of exactly the same scene. Make the deadline. Make the deadline well before the deadline. Don't wait till the day of, because sometimes we have lots and lots and lots of tapes coming in and the system crashes because there's so many um, auditions trying to get to us. And of course, the day you wait to the last minute is the day your internet connection goes down. Right. Right, or you can't upload. So I always say, whatever the deadline is, try to get your tape in a day before, just so you can relax and you know what has been sent. And then Renee said something earlier, uh, get your tape in early so we can fall in love with you first. Yeah, it always helps. You, you, you set the bar if you're the first one we see. So try to be the bar. 
Okay, so now we have resources and technology. So IMDb, how many of you know what this is? All right, IMDb is the Internet Movie Database. Uh, when you saw the breakdown uh, earlier, it told you who the producers were. You need to know who these people are when you go in that room. Mm -hmm. You need to do the research of that show or that movie, or if it's a director that does films, you need to know what his, how he or she uh, sees the world, what their, what their genre is and how their style is set up, so that way you can kind of do that style. You do not want to go in for a comedy thinking it's a drama. So know what you're, you know, know the people who's going to be in the room. Uh, and then what I like to do, so you can find all this information out on IMDb, but I also like to ask my other actor friends, like, hey, I'm going to go into Renee Haynes' room. What's her room like? And they'll, they'll, they'll usually tell me, like, oh, she's a very hands-on director. Uh, she'll give you multiple takes. Uh, she wants you, you know, as soon as you come in, there won't be any chit-chat. You just go right into the scene. She may talk to you afterwards. Uh, she likes people to be prepared. And that way you have an idea of what you're getting into before you go into the room. And I feel that builds my confidence. So, but a good way to do that is to use IMDB. The next item we have is Actors Access. How many of you know what this is? Wonderful. Uh, especially for those of you that do not have representation, Actors Access is a great way for you to be seen. Uh, you can upload your headshots, your resume, and a reel if you have one. And I also find it's a, it's a safe way to get the audition. And I think it's free as well to the actor with a certain number of Right. Yes, and also, if you do have representation, it's free as well because your agent can get you on that. As so, uh, so that's something to look into. And um, if there is a fee, I think with Actors Access, you also get access, if you are a member, you get access to the sides. So you don't have to pay for those sides. Those are free, which is wonderful. Um, and if, you, if there is an expense, it's actually worth the expense, in my opinion. Um, I know sometimes it costs extra money to upload extra headshots or to upload your demo, but that's worth the expense. And you, hopefully, without these tax cuts, we can still write this off. Um, the next thing is backstage and onli online trades. Do you know what we're talking about here? Okay, so like there's backstage west, backstage east, there's the online trades. Uh, basically, you need to know what's coming through the pipeline. And, you know, Wes, Tannis, feel free to jump in at any time. But uh, you need to know what's coming out. You need to know who's working where. Uh, and also, most of these will give you access to um, how you can submit to different projects. Mm -hmm. But I just want to interject there. Be very, very careful, because if you see something online that's asking you for money in exchange for information about an audition, proceed with caution, because I, I'm of the opinion that you should never have to pay money um, for information about an audition. And the next thing is social media. Does everyone know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> social media is actually a really great tool, and unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, a lot of casting directors will look at see how many followers you have, and sometimes I have been told by not any of the casting directors up here, but by other casting directors, that may help them choose who's going to be, who's going to get the part, because they're going to bring all those followers with them. Not me. Not Renee. No. But no. I am, right? <laughs> but social media is also a good way to, because you are, we're talking about you as a business, right? You are your product. And you have to advertise your product. And you have to get your product seen and out there. And so I find social media is a really great way to do that and also to build up your own hype. Uh, in regards to social media though, if you are doing a project and you signed a non-disclosure agreement, <laughs> do not post anything on social media until after they have posted their publicity release. Right, don't even post that you're auditioning for something, like nothing about a current project or, um, oh hey, I went in for this part, or you know, all audition materials should be kept very, very, very confidential. And then local film offices. Do you want to talk about that, Renee? Yeah. Um, a lot of people, uh, again, we're, we're in an area that's very blessed to have a lot of professional opportunity. But a lot of um, uh, people who are in, the, in more rural communities, um, we suggest that they stay in touch with their local film office because they will tell them about legitimate opportunities that are coming to their area. And uh, for a lot of people, that's the best way to get into um, Screen Actors Guild, mm -hmm. quite honestly, because it's very 
difficult if you don't have your SAG card and you go to LA. It's because, you know, there's just so many actors there that are professional actors that that's who we see. And it's hard to get an agent, hard to get in the door. Um, so if you're in an, a, a community that a film comes to your town, uh, certainly check with your film commissioner. A lot of times they will have um, film announcements, announcements about auditions that are in the area. And, you know, put yourself out there submit yourself for those opportunities because if you don't submit they don't know we can't discover you if you don't help us by reaching out from your end too smart mean there's cameras. no schwabs anymore <laughs> no more schwabs drugstore darn that's where i was discovered washing dishes <laughs> You don't believe that, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> um, so uh, as Renee said, smartphone cameras. Most phones now have a camera on them, mm -hmm. and so you always have a way to put yourself on tape. Um, I have become the queen of putting myself on tape because I travel a lot. In the past four years, I've been in my apartment for four months. Um, I've actually lived in my New York apartment, which is not my apartment, longer than I've lived in my actual apartment. Um, and whenever I'm on the road, especially when I'm in a, a hotel, I bought a little, a uh, small HD camera, and also I have a little hookup so you can have a tripod. But if you don't have a tripod, I discovered you can use a lamp and ironing boards to raise the eye level. I mean, there are ways you can do it. And of course, you just hang the sheet behind, cover up the painting. I mean, there, there are ways you can do this. And of course, there are also, um, if you have a smartphone, if you go on to, um, any online store, I won't say anything because I know we're being taped, but, but you know, you can buy the camera hookup, like the little halo light that goes around your iPhone. So you have good lighting wherever you go and it's small and you can pack it with you. And so I always have a travel kit for that reason because you never know when you're gonna get that audition. And sometimes the only camera you have is the one that's on your cell phone. The next thing is the audi audition reader apps. Does anyone know what these are? I don't use them that often. I know that uh, we have split feelings on these. <laughs> we, don't, we don't like them. We don't do like we? them. Uh, don't I like use them, them to learn lines. I don't use them as my reader in the audition. S so if you went on your app store, I, they do have they do serve a purpose for like helping you learn lines and stuff. But um, what they are is this this kind of robotic sounding voice that says the odd the lines the reader lines back to you and sometimes you can record your own voice and it'll repeat the lines back for you if you don't have a reader but please make a friend <laughs> <laughs> and and so Seriously. you have a reader you and can't. read for them yes. and they'll read for you do you know what i mean because mm. it, it's the that human touch is so much more important. It's going to make your audition better. Um, I was going to say also, you know, you don't want anything to detract from you. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is along the same roads of like using props, et cetera. If I'm watching a self tape and that, that electronic voice comes on, I'm, I'm just focusing on it. It takes mm -hmm. me out of it. And mm -hmm. I really just want to focus on you. Um, so even if you, you don't need an actor friend, you just need a human yeah. being who can read lines with you and, and it'll probably elicit a, a better performance from you because you have a human being to work off of. So you can be surprised by them. You know, all of, all of the good juicy stuff. Um, sometimes if you're traveling, it's, it's hard and mm -hmm. you don't want to bring the bellboy in. <laughs> to be Although I have done that. Make, okay. friends <laughs> with the, make friends with the concierge. Yes. Um, oh, and also preferably the reader is an adult. Um, there have been instances oh when yeah. they shared. I, I, I get people who have eight-year-old sons reading opposite them in romantic scenes, and that really does take you out of the thing, too. But those kids are getting pretty good, and I've got my eye on them. Um, uh, likewise, also, if, if it's a two-handed scene and there's, there's a, a partner in the scene, don't do it as a soliloquy, because that's also... Um, I mean, I've seen people do it brilliantly, but chances are if you do that, we're going to call you and we're going to say, you know what, that was really good, but can you get a reader? We really need to see it with a reader because that, that intangible um, listening and reacting just isn't there. And that's important. And the last item we have is a Skype account. 
So if you do not have a Skype account, we suggest that you get one because sometimes you have to have meetings with directors and producers uh, on, you know, on via Skype just because you can't be in the same city as where the auditions are being held. Um, sometimes you'll be asked to audition via Skype. Please, <laughs> please try to get out of that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if, if you can say, oh, I'd love to make you a tape, but can I just meet with you on Skype? Because Skype auditions, sometimes they have to happen because it's the only way to do it, but it's really not optimal. Mm -hmm. Because the screen freezes, mm -hmm. and then you're waiting. There's also FaceTime, though. A mm -hmm. I have a director who's very open to meeting with people on FaceTime, too. Although I try to steer her into bringing actors in rather than um, FaceTiming and doing the audition with them. It's like so weird. <laughs> yeah, I've ha I've had a Skype audition or two it was audition and two Skype callbacks, <laughs> um, but it was they didn't have the camera right at the reader. I could kind of see the whole room, so I just felt like I was acting by myself with this like voice, this little voice that came from my laptop. <laughs> so it was really hard to connect to anything. And where you have to look is weird too. Yeah. It's like, but. But be prepared anyway and get yourself an account. Um, they're free. And um, have somebody practice with you just in case that should come up. So it's not the first time that you're using your account when somebody says, hey, we, I, I want to do a meeting with you over Skype. Mm -hmm. OK? And one way um, a friend Kalani actually has gotten around this is he had to do a Skype audition. So he said he would do it if he could have his own reader. Mm. So then you're not. You, you're not using the computer to have your correspondence with. You're not waiting for the computer to respond back to you. Your reader is in the room. Right, and put that reader, make sure you place that reader right behind your computer and about the same level as where the camera is. So you're not looking up here or down here or over here. You're looking right towards the camera but not right into the camera. Scams. I have a story about this, quick story. Um, I, got a I was doing um, one of the Twilight films, and everybody in and their brother wanted to be in it um, from all over the world. And one day, this young woman who was maybe 16 years old called me up and got through, and she said, hey, is this Renee Haynes who's doing New Moon or what, whichever one it was? And I was like, yeah, it is. Um, what can I do for you? And she says, well, I got a call from a company that I'm not going to name because I don't remember, quite honestly. Um, and they said that they were, um, that I had, me, I had picked her out from their files and was moving her into the Leah callbacks that they were having in Oklahoma. This girl lived in Texas. She was a teenager, and they were asking her to come to Oklahoma, dangling this carrot that was to be Leah in Twilight, and that I had said I picked her. First of all, I never, I don't know that company. I never looked at that company's material, and there was no such callback or audition. Okay, but to get the information for that audition, she needed to pay, join to the next level, which was going to be like $300. And this girl was like, I just don't have the money, but I really want to be in this. You know? And so the, the horror stories that could have happened to this young girl traveling across a state line, which I think might be illegal. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, people will do anything to get your money. So like we, like we were talking about publications, just make sure that you um, check the validity of anything before you take it at face value. Along the same lines, if I could just share one thing with you, uh, we're in, the, I'd like to <clears throat> tell you all that social media has its advantages and disadvantages, uh, and I just want you all to know that I am not asking you for any money. 
somebody has been doing so. Uh, so you'll get uh, people that jump on and claim they are you. They're, and uh, and they'll ask all of your followers and or you know the social media contacts for money for different things like orphanages or uh, things that supposedly West Duty supports. You know, so that's one of the disadvantages of uh, social media. So this is also our our one intermission as well. When we come back, we'll be doing the audition portion. Yes, the next part is really fun, so be sure to come back. So even if you are not auditioning, it's a great chance to see how we set up the tape so you can see how to record yourself for a self-tape. And I also find by just being in the room when an audition is happening, um, I can learn from what I'm observing, even if I'm not actively participating. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the auditioning portion of the panel. So what's going to happen is we're going to set this up like you would if you were going to producer's callback. So in our room today, uh, we have Wes Studi, who is going to be our producer director. <laughs> Catherine is our casting director. And Renee is also a producer. So we're going to have, we're going to start off with a scene from um, the movie Four Wedding Planners. And the way it's going to start off is we're going to have a reader in the room. And then we're going to have our people who will come in and audition. And we're going to treat them like you, you would happen if you went to a producer's callback. So that means they're going to come in, they're going to audition. They may or may not get an adjustment. It does not reflect anything on you if you do or do not get one, so don't take it to heart. Uh, and you're going to have little curveballs thrown at you, if maybe, perhaps. So just be on the lookout. But we're also, for those of you who are watching, you're going to see several different people audition for the same part, and you're going to see how they bring their unique selves to that, and how even though they're auditioning for the same role, they're, they're very unique and different. We can never be together. Why? I mean, I know why I couldn't be with you, but why can't you be with me? No, no, no. Why can't you be with me? Because you're a non-believer. What? You believe in love. That's ridiculous, of course I do. No, you don't. You don't believe in love the way, you, the way that you feel for someone today can last forever. And that's why you'll never get married. And that's why we can't be together. I'm a believer. So this girl you're with is a believer? She is. Congratulations. Hold up. Just because two people believe in love doesn't mean that we are right for each other. Then why are you with her? I love her. What? What? But not forever? Why would you, a believer, be with someone you love but don't want to marry? I didn't say I didn't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, I didn't. Well, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I marry someone who isn't ready? I don't know. Why marry at all? Why not just love the one you're with? <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> well, I love the energy. I, I love the energy. I definitely do. Uh, can I ask you from the top to t to maybe condense it a little bit? But I, I keep the energy, please. But uh, outwardly, show me what's inside. Got it. Yeah. We can never be together. Why? I mean, I, I, I know I couldn't be with you, but why can't you be with me? No, no, no. Why can't you be with me? Because you're a non-believer. What? I believe in love. That's ridiculous. Of course I do. No, you don't. You don't believe in love that you feel for someone today can last forever, and that's why you'll never get married. And that's why we can't be together. I'm a believer. So this girl you're with is a believer? She is. Congratulations. Hold up. Just because two people believe in love doesn't mean that they are right for each other. Then why are you with her? I love her. What? What? <laughs> but not forever? Why would you, a believer, be with someone? Why would a believer be with someone you love but don't want to marry? I didn't say I didn't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, I didn't. Well, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I marry someone who isn't ready? 
I don't know, why marry at all? Why not just love the one you're with? Good, really nice. Um, <laughs> Emily, one, one thing that you can think about that, that you're doing is you're leaning forward into your lines. Okay. And you're going to have a lot more power in the scene if you keep yourself. Like Got it. And what she did was really good. She moved a lot, but she really didn't move off her mark. But you, she, she kept the, the scene really fluid and, and the movement nice. We could never be together. Why? I mean, you know, I know why I couldn't be with you, uh, but why can't you be with me? No, 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 no. Why can't you be with me? Because you're a non-believer. What? You don't believe in love. That's ridiculous. Of, of course I do. No, you don't. You don't believe the love that you feel for someone today could last forever, and that's why I'll never get married, and that's why we can't be together. I'm a believer. So, this girl you're with, is she a believer? She is. Congratulations. Hold up. Just because two people believe in love doesn't mean that they are right for each other. Then why are you with her? I love her. What? What? But not forever. Why would you, a believer, be with someone you love but don't want to marry? I didn't say I don't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, I didn't. Well, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I want to marry someone who isn't ready? I don't know. Why marry at all? Why not just love the one that you're with? Nice. Mm. Better. <laughs> all right. good. Yeah, very good adjustment. Very nice. Very, very good. And never be afraid to use your sides. I mean, you can always have them there. More, more often than not, you won't even look down at them. There's something about the magic of having them. Holding it reminded me of the next line. I forgot the second page. I was like, oh, just holding it is better. Yeah. I mean, I know why I couldn't be with you, but why can't you be with me? No, no, no. Why can't you be with me? Because you're a non-believer. What? You don't believe in love. That's ridiculous. Of course I do. No, you don't. You don't believe the love you feel for someone today can last forever, and that's why you'll never get married, and that's why we can't be together. I'm a believer. So this girl you're with is a believer? She is. Congratulations. Hold up, just because two people believe in love doesn't mean they're right for each other. Then why are you with her? I love her. What? What? But not forever? Why would you, a believer, be with someone you love but don't want to marry? I didn't say I don't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, no, I didn't. Well, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I want to marry someone who isn't ready? I don't know. Why marry at all? Why not just love the one you're with? Really nice. I have a question. Is he talking about her in the scene? Yeah. OK, so what if we do it again as an invitation? You're trying to bring her over to your side with all of your little hints and the, and the positivity about love. I mean, you did a really lovely job, but I think it'll just elevate maybe the, the humor a little bit if, yeah. um, if you're trying to seduce her with your words. Cool. We could never be together. Why? I mean, I know why I couldn't be with you, but why can't you be with me? No, 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 why can't you be with me? Because you're a non-believer. What? You don't believe in love. That's ridiculous. Of course I do. No, you don't. Well, you don't believe the love you feel for someone today can last forever. And that's why you'll never get married. And that's why we can't be together. I'm a believer. So this girl you're with is a believer? She is. Congratulations. Hold up. Just because two people believe in love doesn't mean they're right for each other. And why are you with her? I love her. What? What? But not forever? Why would you, a believer, be with someone you love but don't want to marry? Well, I didn't say I don't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, I didn't. Well, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I want to marry someone who isn't ready? I don't know. Why marry at all? Why not just love the one you're with? Why would you, a believer, be with someone you love but don't want to marry? I didn't say I didn't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, I didn't. Well, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I want to marry someone who isn't ready? I don't know. Why marry at all? Why not just love the one you're with? 
Tannis was doing the re bad reader thing, <laughs> and she was, and she was still really good. <laughs> we could never be together. Why? I, I mean, I know I couldn't be with you, but why can't you be with me? No, no, no. no. Why can't you be with me? Because you're a non-believer. What? You don't believe in love. That's ridiculous. Of course I do. No, you don't. You don't believe the love that you feel the same day can last forever. And that's why you can't get married, and that's why we can't be together. I'm a believer. So this girl you're with is a believer? She is. Congratulations. Hold up. Just because two people are in love doesn't mean that they're right for each other. Then why are you with her? I love her. What? Why? But not forever? Why would you, a believer, be with someone you love but don't want to marry? I didn't say I didn't want to marry her. Yeah, you kind of did. No, I didn't. Well, what, do you want to marry her? I don't think she's ready. But do you want to marry her? How can I want to marry someone who isn't ready? I don't know. Why marry at all? Why not just love the one you're with? Excuse me? Shh. Hi. I wonder if you won't mind taking your baby outside till the end of the ceremony. What? Or maybe I could take your baby so you can enjoy the ceremony. And you are? I'm Lily, one of the wedding planners. Well, Lily, my baby is fine. Thank you for your concern. Actually, your baby smells like poop. Maybe that's why it's crying. I think it would be better, everyone would feel better if you stepped outside and changed it. <laughs> How dare you tell me what to do with my child? And she is not an it. She is a person. <laughs> and she deserves your respect. I couldn't tell. She's still in that androgynous baby phase. Either way, she's disturbing the ceremony. And quite frankly, that's more your fault than hers. So I'll just take her out. Oh, get your hands off my child. Can, can, you, can you do it with a smile on your face throughout? Yeah, that's the whole thing? Yeah, great, yeah, sure. Excuse me. Shh. Hi, I wonder if you won't mind taking your baby outside till the end of the ceremony? What? Or maybe I could take the baby so you can enjoy the ceremony. And you are? I'm Lily. I'm one of the wedding planners. Oh, wow, Lily. <laughs> My child is fine. Thank you for your concern. Actually, your baby smells like poop. Maybe that's why it's crying. I think it would feel better, everyone would feel better, if you stepped outside and changed it. How dare you tell me what to do with my child? <laughs> and she is a she, not an it. She is a person and she deserves your respect. I couldn't tell. She's still in that androgynous baby phase. Either way, she's disturbing the ceremony and quite frankly, that's more your fault than hers. So I'll just take her outside. Get your hands off my child! <laughs> <laughs> This is Mr. Skak, our scholarship's generous donor. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, excellent, sir. Uh, good. Uh, first off, thank you all for clearing your schedules and coming in on such short notice. I know how busy you kids can be these days. Usually by now, I have my winner picked out, but this year was tough. You each stand out in your own way, arts, sports, academics, and in some cases, all three. And your essays were just great, A. Sadly, we can only offer one award. So that's why I've assembled a more expert uh, jury to decide who that winner should be. Uh, if this award is about finding the one person who best represents the values of this year's class, who better to decide than all of you. <laughs> now, I've got to head off. Do me proud and pick the best winner. You want to try one just for fun, just to try something a little different? Yeah. Like, you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know exactly the bastard you're about to be. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Maybe a stretch. <laughs> Everyone, this is Mr. Skak our scholarship's generous donor. Right, how are we doing on time? Oh, excellent, sir. Good, all right, first off, I wanna thank you all for clearing your schedules and coming in on such short notice. I know how busy you kids can be these days. Now, usually by now, I have a winner picked out, but this year was tough. You each are, offer something special in your own way, arts, sports, academics, um, sometimes all three of them. And your essays were great A. Uh, 
sadly, we can only offer one award. So that's why I've assembled a more expert jury to decide who that winner should be. Now, if this award is about finding the one person who best represents the values of this year's class, who better to decide than all of you? <laughs> now, I've got to head off. <laughs> Do me proud and pick the best winner. Everyone, this is Mr. Skak, our scholarship's generous donor. Hey, how are we doing on time? Excellent, sir. Oh, uh, good. Oh, thank you all for coming out uh, on such short notice. I'm glad you cleared your schedules. You kids, I know you have a lot to do these days. Usually, though, I've already picked my winner. And you kids have done some remarkable things. Uh, you excelled at sports, academics, and even in ac um, some other accolades. But you've also <laughs> excelled in all three in some cases. Mm -hmm. But your essays were exactly spot on. Okay? But sadly enough, we can only give out one award. And so I've assembled a jury that will best make this decision for us. Now, if this award is to find the best person suited for this, for this year's class, who better to choose than all of you? And I have to be heading out, so make me proud. Pick the best winner. Awesome. Okay. Very good. Can, 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 you, uh, can you do it like throwaways? The first part of it is like throwaways. Like, like he's got some place to be? Yeah. 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 You got some Clearing place to be. Clearing things off your desk. You know you're going somewhere. Everyone, this is Mr. Skak, our scholarship's generous donor. How are we doing on time? Excellent, sir. Uh, good. First of all, thank you for clearing your schedule and making time out of your busy day. I know you kids have a lot of things to do these days. Um, but. I've already picked my winner most of the time, but this year was pretty tough. You know, I, you all stand out in your each, each unique way. S sports, academics, and arts. And sometimes, cases all three. But your essays were spot on. Kind of have you there. So sadly, I'm only going to pick one winner. And, but I've assembled the best jury to make this decision. If this award is to pick who to best represent this class this year, I think that decision should be all of you. Now, I have to be getting off. So make me proud. Pick the best winner. Just for the audience, um, see how we had four excellent and very different choices. And they kind of all brought in their own personality with the role, hopefully. Um, and uh, that's what it's about. It's about sort of bringing yourself to the role. And um, that's what keeps us entertained. <laughs>